Hey, so another watercolour painting of Melbourne because I do like Melbourne. So to start off with I got watercolour pad and a pencil and sketched in the perspective lines and blocked in the shapes of the buildings. When doing this I mainly looked at straight edges of the buildings like the long line I did straight across the page. This stage is kind of important, it will make the other steps a lot easier. And then I went in with a fine micron pen. A finer pen is helpful because you can make a few variations of the same line and you don't notice it in the end result, whereas a thicker line would be a thick harsh line that you're more than likely going to be stuck with if you put it in the wrong spot. So the more time you spend in this beginning stage, the more fun you have at the, paint, at the end of the painting stage. Whenever someone asks me what it's like being able to paint or draw, I tell them it's just so much fun it's hard to describe, just zooming in on a section of a photo and sketching exactly what's in the photo is incredibly fun. Like, it's hard to explain how enjoyable it is. So to give a bit more input on that subject, what you're essentially doing is creating the framework for you to colour in later. So just like you would get a colouring in book and colour in around the lines, or inside the lines, if I know how a colouring in book works. So the more effort and time and practice you put into this first stage of firstly perspective, and that's just a good thing to practice because it will help your end result in a lot of your paintings. And secondly, just spending time just scratching in, you don't have to do it like with perfect accuracy, just scratching in the detail and eventually you'll um, grow your image. So I went, I bounced around in different areas of the painting, like I would put in all the black dots in the corner brickwork in that weird bricks with the holes in it, I don't know why there's holes in it. Um, and then I went up to the f window frames and did detail in them because you will probably get bored with just doing it in one spot. So if you play around and go around in the painting, you'll find that it might be more enjoyable for you. So the more time you spend doing all of this and mucking around with it, then when you get to the painting stage, all you're doing is doing a colouring in, like from a printed book. All you have to do is look at your reference photo and just colour in from there. So that's an easier way to explain it, I think. So now that the sketching is done, we can apply some water. Now I've said this in most of my watercolour videos, but I like to see this step like this. So if you apply paint directly on dry paper, the paint will be the first thing the paper soaks up. There's nothing to cushion the paint going onto the paper. But applying water first, it's going to soak into the paper and create a soft place for the paint to rest and flow about like watercolour does naturally, flows in water. So this first layer is where you put down most of the bulk colours, just like when you're blocking out the buildings. You throw down the blue sky, if there's blue sky, you throw down the basic block colour of the buildings and the dark spaces and they all mingle and mix together and create this really soft base for you to work on. But you want to make sure all the paints that you're using are the same water to paint ratio because if there's more water in one of them that's going to overtake the other paint and then it's going to like have this weird bleeding look. They're not going to all mingle together nicely. And so that's when I use the term mapping out the painting. So where the darkest shadows are if there's a light source, which there isn't really in this painting, in this photo, it's sort of like an overcast day when I took it. I would put in some very light yellows and oranges if there's a sunlight coming in and it'd just bleed everywhere to give a glowing effect. When the paint flows around it creates this hazy effect, which is like really soft shadows. And when it dries it makes a very light shadowy effect which I think makes a painting look more naturally realistic, if that makes sense. But mine tend to still have like a stylized look about them. And then blow dry that, and you can usually tell it's dry by looking at all the buckling that happened when you wet 
the paper starting to flatten out again and it goes lighter. So watercolour dries lighter than when you put it down. I constantly forget that so that's alright. So by now I've already started adding in the finer details because we've put down the groundwork for the shadows and we've got a good base and coat of tones. So now it's pretty fun just putting in all the details. Okay, so you can already see that the first layer of watercolour paint I put down, it looks okay and it looks pretty realistic because I put the darker paint on the right side of the building and it bled into the other side so it's not a harsh line where the shadow starts and finishes. And that right side of the building, which I seem to always come back to, um, started to really come to life when the more and more shadows added to it. And you could see as I was adding the darker shadows on that corner closest to us, you could see how it goes from that dark edge to the bright side of the building. There's the shadow line, but you can, you can notice that there's this blurry effect from the dark to light. That's from the original base coat we put down. So it bled over, that dark paint bled over to the light side. Just a little bit, so it created a nice smooth transition. And I think something that helped the painting is on the right side of the building where everything is dark, there's still parts of those windows that are light. There's some amount of light coming through to that side, reflection off of the road or the other buildings or whatever that's reflecting onto the window. So it's not just in complete darkness, there's a little bit of light there, which creates some sort of realism. This is like a painting that I could have spent just days on, just keep adding more and more details until I got super bored, but I eventually got to a place where I felt like I could finish. And pretty much after that, it's just more and more and more layers of paint. Zooming in in the photo and putting in more details. Oh my gosh, so for the past two weeks, I've been part of a team that's been doing a live YouTube performance every Friday for the kids that we work with and it's been so much fun. Uh, I've been doing laugh you lose challenges with a mouthful of water. Um, also doing social distancing at the same time is really difficult. Um, and doing gross cookie decorating challenges and if you lose you have to eat the cookie. And this week I just did a whisper challenge thing with headphones blaring music in your ear and you have to guess what the person was saying. Anyway, it was so much fun if you want to go check it out um, at EC Youth TV. I can leave a link, I think, if I know how to do that. But yeah, other than that, um, thanks for watching. I um, hope this helped um, with some stuff because sometimes getting advice from professional artists, it's hard translating what they have to say. So if you get it from an amateur like me, it can. Um, sort of speak to you easier, I guess. But anyway, thanks for watching. Have a bonza week. Go do something fun for quarantine. I don't know, draw. Do some drawing in quarantine. That's a good thing. Drawing is fun. Do drawing.